Hello, today I'm going to introduce you my add-on for procedural hair creation named Medusa Notes. It features different geometry notes modifiers as well as hierarchy to view these modifiers and lots of different little stuff. Quick disclaimer, this add-on is not finished yet, it has lots of issues, please don't use it for real production. Without further ado, let's jump into working on this kind of groom. We first have to uh, make sure that the scalp geometry, which is going to emit the hair, has a proper UV map. For that, we can go to the UV editing mode. Uh, we have to make sure that the mesh is located in the UV box in this space from 0 to 1. Don't go outside of it. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it will not work. So the UDIMs are not supported at the moment. After you do that and your UVs are just fine, you have to make sure that your geometry is selected and then you can go to the, your end panel and uh, go to your Medusa Notes tab and hit on the new groom button which is right under Medusa Notes panel. We'll hit there and we'll not focus uh, on the name. Just the important thing is that uh, if you have multiple parts, for example, flyaway, sideburns or uh, front hair, you can choose to enter the name of the part and then yeah, after you've done it, you can make another part and work on it. So uh, this is not important at the moment. I'm going to hit create group. And immediately there are some things that are happening and I'm going to talk about them right now. So first of all, we see this uh, new hair generated here, which is a little bit weird, but we are going to fix it in a moment. And in the outliner, most important thing, we see a new collection with the hair object inside. And this hair object is also is a child of the sculpt object of this uh, emitter object we had previously selected. And the hair object has also a geometry nodes modifier on it. And this geometry nodes modifier and whatever happens there is also visualized in the uh, Medusa nodes hierarchy panel. So let's collapse this one and focus on this hierarchy. So if we select our hair object, we will see that there are two nodes. And by clicking on them, you can see their parameters. Uh, this is a button a node and this is a top node. And uh, the one called generator, the other one is the is a visualizer, even though you can't really see uh, on its name because it's named exactly the same as your hair object. It still is a visualizer and that is indicated by the node group's name. So let's talk briefly about these two nodes. So uh, these are the base nodes and they will be not deleted. And they are most important nodes. Everything else which we are going to do is going to go right in between these nodes. Let's start by talking about the generator. So the generator does really uh, the uh, thing that the generator should be doing. And it's uh, generating the hair or the splines. And uh, more important parameters would be for you right now uh, the uh, density parameter, which we are going to increase for now. And this is not an actual hair count. It's just a density value. Uh, then there is also a length, which is also quite ugly right now. Let's fix it. And there is also a density map, which we are going to use later. There is also a, a minimum distance slider, which uses a Poisson disk distribution. And uh, you see what it does. It is a little bit slower than the regular random distribution, which is used at the moment. Um, then there is also a seat slider. Uh, rest of the uh, checkboxes and the parameters we are not going to discuss at the moment except of the control point count. Control point count is really a, just a um, value that defines how many of the points are per spline. So each and every spline has the same amount of these uh, points. And I usually would always start lower, maybe at eight or four or whatever suits you best and advance and go higher as your groom detail level goes higher and higher and the definition goes higher and higher. Right now, I'm going to just stay with the 16 um, control point count, and this is uh, going to be good. Let's go to the visualizer. Visualizer does pretty much what it should be doing as well. It, vis it visualizes the hair, and uh, we can adjust the thickness. We can adjust also thickness profile, which is also neat. One thing to note is that you cannot really see the actual fall off of your um, uh, or the proper follow or profil uh, profile of your uh, thickness in the viewport, in Blender's viewport, or in EV for that matter, you always have to go to your cycles uh, rendering uh, mode, and, and only after that you will see proper 
proper uh, thickness profile. Yeah, probably is it visible? Yeah, you see now now it works. So if I switch back to the viewport, it doesn't really represent the same thing. So I'll keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to leave the slider really um, like this. It's not something that I'm going to focus at the moment. And also the thickness could be a little thinner. We can also change the density as well. Let's go a little bit higher here as well. Maybe even more like this. And I think I'm going to change thickness one more time like this. Now I would uh, switch to generator again and we can start defining our scattering uh, or uh, the distribution of our hairs. And the way we do this uh, by previously mentioned density map parameter and the uh, one of the most important things about uh, this system is, is that you can affect every parameter in a really uh, different way. And for that, you can use certain mask group. In this case, it's going to be a texture mask group and you can find it right next to the parameter you're working on. Just hit on this button here. And uh, the first one is the texture mask group here. Select it. And as soon as you do that, immediately we cannot see anything. Uh, so the hairs are gone. But here is a new a little drop down with uh, the image node buttons here. So this might look familiar for you. Now you can uh, create a new texture and start painting on it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to name this texture density map, which is not important how what name you're going to choose. But yeah, this will be good for me. I created a black texture and uh, right next to this image texture buttons, you will see the quick uh, paint mode button. If I click on it, now I can select the brush with a white color and preferably in the mirror mode uh, start painting on it and as soon as we start painting on it we see that the hair uh, start to grow and uh, you can always uh, hit on the s key and pick a, another color or hit on the x and then it's going to change oops sorry like this if i hit on x then i'm going to switch to the complementary or the other color this will help us to paint all over this geometry, all over this texture. So probably it's not a good idea to go too low here. So uh, this should be good. And also maybe we can go a little here, down, something like this. So it's not ideal, far from it, but I'm sure you're going to do a way better job than I'm doing in this demo. So I think this should be enough for now. And um, yes, we have now covered the density map and the way you can use a texture mask group to mask some parameter. Next up, we can uh, go ahead and add another node, but this time it's going to be a main node. The uh, Everything that we are going to add to this hierarchy is going to go right in between, as I mentioned. And uh, I would advise to always go, first of all, after you have generated your splines with the guide uh, guide deformer. So the guide deformer doesn't look uh, good at the moment. And first of all, we have uh, something new going on here. So we now have this new node. It has also its uh, little arrow here, which, in which indicates that there is another dropdown and underneath is the another dropdown. And as you can see, these two are uh, same uh, type of nodes as these two. So basically we have another hierarchy which is connected to our guide deformer. And this hierarchy is nothing more than the generator and visualizer node of uh, this newly, newly created guide curves object. And the guide curves object is going to help us uh, to affect uh, hairs in a, in a quicker way. And also it has more control. Uh, let's start doing something with it because right now we can't really see anything. I would go to the bottom node, to the generator. You will see that here is uh, a control point count, which is now driven by the control point count of the hair object. So they are synced in. And uh, also you can probably disable this generate button because we, we could actually generate some guides, but at the moment uh, this feature doesn't really work. So you can for now, skip it and just disable generate and enter the manual guide uh, add mode and start adding 
the guides. So this is the scalp mode. You, you can just hit on it and then you can start adding guides. Actually, I forgot about something. Yeah, let's delete every guide here and enable mirror. And now you can start adding some guides. I also don't like the thickness of these guides. And for that, I'm going to go to our visualizer node of the guides and make them a little thinner. And this is actually what I really want. Enter the sculpt mode again, and you can start sculpting here. You can also add as many guides as you wish. You can um, comp them and do all sorts of stuff. I would advise to use not too many guides, but also to use a little bit uh, more. So it, it should be something that you're going to experiment with. Yeah, it may depend on your groom type and the groom length and so on. Yeah, so you can continue to uh, do this. I'm going to, yes, I'm going to jump to the part where um, I have sculpted the guides and um, we can continue that.